So I just showed you how to record, how, how to import data from your USB stick using the easy method. It was with this button here, or it was with this button, or sorry, this button, import data there. And I'm going to show you the hard way or the useful way, depending on how you do it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I have to know the location. And so, so this may seem kind of stupid, but I'm going to go in here and I know this G colon slash new file, whatever it is. And so there's a function called CSV read, and I'm just going to do, first I'm going to clear all my data. So that just cleared out my workspace here. If you backed up the video, you'd notice that I cleared out the val value called data. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do CSV read is a built-in MATLAB function. And I remember that it was G colon. And here's something kind of cool about MATLAB. It takes us from bash and DOS and other, you know, other command line options. But I'm just going to hit tab when I get there. And what's kind of cool about that is when I hit tab, it opens up all the different options I have. Notice I just want CSVs. And so I can come in here and uh, let's do this one. And the other thing that I could have done is I could have just typed in N and tab, and it just starts, it gives me everything that starts with N. And so I'm going to do that one again. And don't worry, but we're going to get an error. And so this is kind of the pain about doing it manually, doing it across the command line. But there's an extremely powerful use for this. So just hang on, and you'll understand. So we want to import that using a CSV read. And it's giving us some issues. It's having trouble reading number from row 1, field 1, x, channel. Remember, oh, that was the header stuff. And so let's take a look at help CSV read. Rather than just giving up, we're going to do that. Well, this is what we tried. We just put in the file name and we tried reading. But we remember that there's two different kinds of data in there. There is both text data and there's numerical data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this right here. And it says start from row and column that we want to. So we can input a value here and here. Well, it's based so that everything starts at 0 row 0, column 0. So this is index from 0, which is the opposite of everything else MATLAB does, which is indexes from 1. And so we're going to end up having to really remember there were two rows that we got rid of. So we're going to start indexing from row 2, 0, 1, 2. Okay, and so what we're going to do, I just use my up arrow. And I want to start on row 2, column 0. And we'll see if that works. Let me put a semicolon there so it doesn't spew out all the data. That one worked. Look, we have a 600 by 3, by three uh, value. I'm just going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to plot those two against each other. And I think let's do uh, close all. OK, now we're going to plot this. And here we go. We've got. Uh, the data that's imported by CSV read and you may be saying that was a pain in the rear end and it was a little bit But here's the thing. What if I have a thousand files that are numbered sequential sequ sequentially? Well, that's where this becomes very very useful. So right now I have four if we look at My easy button. I have four files now doing four files isn't a big pain But this is for demonstration purposes and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a for loop now, we could do this in a script if we wanted to, but I'm just going to do it for command line. It's a lot harder to do on command line, so don't try this at home. Try it on a script instead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something they call invec g new, and it doesn't give me any, any completions. New file. Let's see. Let's see if I have. Oh, I forgot an equal sign. New file. Invec is equal to. New, maybe it will now. No, nope, it won't. New file, and I have this from some time ago. And it doesn't like that. Uh, oh, I need a square bracket. So, invec is equal to. So, let me redo this just a little bit. New file, no completions file, new file. Now, the last character was the one that we paid attention to, right? It's the one that changed. So a new file, I'm going to stop. 
there's a little value called num to string. What this is going to do is it's going to take a double value or numerical value and it's going to turn it into a car value or a string value. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do k minus 1 so that it starts from 0. So a num, num string of k minus 1. And then all I have to do is dot csv and maybe this will work. Put the close bracket on it. We're going to leave it unsuppressed so we can see it. And then I'm going to do uh, x is equal to csv read. I'm going to say invec to 0. It's going to look exactly like how we did it before. I'm going to suppress that output. Now I'm going to do figure. And I'm going to do, I'm just going to, it'll do a new, if I don't leave an index off, it'll just do a new figure every time. And then I'm going to plot x just like this x label, y label we have saved from before, and, and when I hit this, it's now going to open up all four files, plot all four of them, and I could even add a title onto these, so let me add a title. I'm going to do square bracket, and we're going to say, uh, this is, sorry, this is file space, num2 string, k minus 1. End it. Oh, and I made num2 string. I made a mistake right here. I forgot the 2. So let's go back and try this one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, right. Num2. So I apologize for that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Or we can copy and paste, which is what I'm going to do. Copy, paste. Ah! So what it just did is it plotted out four plots. And we can see one, two. Well, this one was left over from before. I'm going to exit out. One two, three, four. So there are four plots. And some of this data looks eerily similar to the other data. There's three, there's four, and there's five. OK. So the other thing is I didn't suppress the input, the output of invec. And this is kind of interesting because this tells us, well, it first read new file 0, new file 1, new file 2, new file 3. And you can see if you had lots and lots and lots of data, you would not want to be plotting these each individually, adding labels, and then there are also options to save this as a file. So you can save it as a PDF or an image or something like this, or if you're making lots of plots. And so this is a great way to do that kind of stuff. Get used to using command line, is, I guess, is the whole point of what this is.